on the 2nd of September 2019, the dive boat Conception was moored overnight off the coast of Santa Cruz Island. On board were six members of crew and 33 passengers, all of them sound asleep after a day spent diving in the beautiful waters of the Pacific Ocean. Shortly after midnight, a small electrical fault would begin a chain of events that would destroy this peaceful scene and result in one of the worst accidents ever to take place in the waters of California. Truth Aquatics was a family-owned and operated company based in Santa Barbara, which owned three boats, the Conception, the Truth, and the Vision. These vessels were used to offer liveaboard diving trips, excursions where passengers would spend several days living on board one of these boats and carrying out numerous supervised dives in different locations. Truth Aquatics had an excellent reputation and was respected as one of the best operators in its sector. Testament to the quality of service it offered were its many loyal and repeat customers. Worldwide Dive Adventures, a tour operator, had been chartering trips from Truth Aquatics for around 30 years as of 2019. Because of this, Truth Aquatics was the obvious choice when Worldwide Dive Adventures organised a three-day trip for 33 customers over the course of the Labour Day weekend of 2019. Passengers came aboard late on the evening of the 30th of August, and the vessel got underway in the early hours of the 31st of August, anchoring at its first dive location shortly after dawn. After breakfast, a safety briefing was held. As a crew member was telling passengers about the fire safety features of their home for the next few days, one passenger fainted. They were given first aid and soon made a full recovery but when the briefing resumed, it moved directly on to the matter of safety during dives. No fire evacuation drill was carried out. Over the next few days, passengers enjoyed several dives. These were conducted during the day at various locations around Santa Cruz Island. In the evening, passengers shared meals in the galley, then retired to bed in the below-deck bunk room. Cell phones and diving equipment would be recharged overnight using several sockets located in the galley. In the early hours of the 2nd of September, the second galley hand on board the Conception had trouble sleeping. At 1.30am, he went to the galley and spent some time cleaning, something he often did when he could not sleep, before returning to bed. He was awoken again, however, less than an hour later by what sounded to him like a passenger falling over in the galley. The galley hand left his bunk to try and assist, but was confronted by the sight of an established fire, which had already consumed a large section of the main deck. The galley hand quickly woke four other crew members who were sleeping on the upper deck, including the captain. Over the next few minutes, these crew members made several attempts to access the lower decks via windows or doors, but in each case were forced back by smoke or flames. In the end, they were forced to jump down to a lower deck, with one of them misjudging the distance and breaking his leg in the process. While the others continued to try and reach the passenger bunk room, the captain alerted the Coast Guard. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Conception, Platts Harbour, Northside Santa Cruz. 39 POB. I can't breathe. 39 POB. Platts. This was all the captain was able to transmit before smoke forced him to jump from the wheelhouse into the ocean. As he did so, he drew with him a trail of smoke, the sight of which convinced the remaining crew that he was on fire when he jumped. One crew member dived in to assist him, and was soon followed by the others. Once it had been ascertained that the captain was not seriously injured, two crew members reboarded the boat. Again, their attempts to reach passengers failed, and they resorted to launching the emergency skiff from the rear of the boat. After getting the crew on board this skiff, they motored to the nearest other vessel, a privately owned pleasure boat named the Grape Escape. The crew woke up the owners of the Grape Escape and used their equipment to place further distress calls. The Coast Guard already had resources underway, but had misinterpreted the captain's original message. His report that he could not breathe had indicated to them a medical emergency, not a fire, and so it was only now that resources for firefighting were mobilised. 
The crew used the skiff to search the waters around the blazing boat, but it was to no avail. The Conception was now entirely consumed by flames and was burning down to the waterline. As firefighting boats arrived on scene, the Conception's anchor line burned through, and the boat began to drift. It floated into an area of shallow water and had to be towed back out before firefighting boats could get close enough to fully extinguish it. As dawn broke, the fire was finally put out, and the wreck was towed back towards the island, but sank completely before reaching land. Though the search for survivors continued for some time, none were found. In total, the accident had taken the lives of 33 passengers and one crew member, all of whom had died in the lower deck bunk room on board the burning boat. Despite a lengthy investigation by the Coast Guard and the National Transportation Safety Board, it was not possible to definitively determine the source of ignition. It was, however, considered very likely that the fire had begun in the salon, where passenger cell phones and other devices were charging unattended overnight. Devices which contain lithium batteries, like cell phones or cameras, can usually be charged without issue, but if the battery is defective or damaged, there is a possibility that the device may become hot or even explode. Indeed, this exact thing had happened on the Conception's sister ship, the Vision, in 2018. A battery charger exploded, requiring passengers to use firefighting equipment to prevent a fire. Whether the fire was caused by a faulty battery or by a fault with other equipment on board the Conception, the fact remained that it should not have been able to develop undiscovered to the point that it was uncontrollable. Any boat which passengers occupy overnight is required by law to have a roving watchman, a member of crew who remains awake and patrols the vessel to ensure that all is well while others on board are asleep. This requirement had been in place for more than a century. In the case of Truth Aquatics, it was down to the captain of each individual ship to ensure that it was adhered to. The captain of the Conception had incorrectly believed that having one crew member sleep in the passenger bunk room satisfied the requirement for a watchman. This was incorrect. To be acceptable, the crew member would have needed to remain awake and patrol the whole of the boat. Additionally, the emergency exit from the bunk room was found to be inadequate. It consisted of a narrow, inaccessible hatch above a bunk that led up into the galley, and which therefore would have been of no use to passengers even if they had been able to access it. The positioning of smoke alarms, the lack of linked smoke alarms, and the use of some flammable materials such as plastic chairs and rubber bins were also criticised by investigators. In the aftermath of the disaster, Truth Aquatics made a number of changes to its two remaining vessels. More robust fire detection systems were installed, emergency exits were significantly improved, and fireproof cabinets were installed within which equipment could be safely charged. Roving patrols were also instituted on board both vessels, along with a system for monitoring and logging that these patrols were indeed taking place. Despite making these changes, Truth Aquatics also voluntarily ceased operations in the wake of the disaster, with no plans to resume at any point. A permanent memorial to those who lost their lives in the disaster was put in place the following year. The fire on board the Conception is recognised as the most deadly maritime disaster to take place in the US in more than 30 years, and the most deadly ever to take place in the waters of California. The loss of so many people has touched thousands of lives. An uncountable number of friends, family members, children, grandchildren and colleagues are all now missing the presence of a loved one in their lives. Despite the shock and loss caused by the disaster, Many relatives and friends of survivors have worked tirelessly in the months and years since. The National Transportation Safety Board has suggested numerous changes that would prevent a similar disaster. Changes such as a requirement for interlinked smoke alarms and routine checks by the Coast Guard that roving patrols are in place. The loved ones of those who lost their lives on board the Conception have campaigned ever since for those suggestions to be enshrined in law.